September 15, an important day in the life of the 80-year-old People's National Party in Jamaica, a race for the vice presidency in the party, four posts up for grabs, and six were the candidates lining up. My guest on The Conversation, a new season of the program, is the party general secretary, Julian Robinson, a man who is the member of parliament for Southeast St. Andrew and one of the bright prospects where leadership is concerned in the country. Julian, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, George. I must tell my viewers, before I must cut you, I must tell my viewers, I've been trying to get Julian on this show for it's a true. very long time. It's true. But it's he's true. so busy. It's true. No, yeah. I acknowledge that. There but I'm go. happy to be here. Excellent. Uh, let, let's start with the constituency, of course, sure. Southeast St. Andrew. You've been there since 2011, mm -hmm. uh, the December 28, 2011 elections. And seven years forward, 2018 mm -hmm. now, how are things now compared to when you first entered the House as the people's representative? Um, it, it's a very unique constituency, unique in that it spans a number of commercial areas, New Kingston, Halfway Tree, Crossroads, parts of Ligony. Mm -hmm. It has a mix of residential areas. It has a mix of the different socioeconomic groups from the affluent to the very poor. Yes. And so it's a constituency where there isn't a one size fit all approach to representation because the issues that affect one set of people don't necessarily affect another. I would say we have made some strides in there's a lot of infrastructure development taking place in the constituency. Yes. There are, there are three new hotels which will come on stream in probably a year. There is the Boot Stewart on Lady Musgrave, mm -hmm. there is the Hendrickson's with the Windham, yes. and then there's the W Hotel on Ruthven, which is a project with um, Evan Williams and Bogdanovich. Yes. Um, there are a number of new um, BPOs that have been developed. The largest one I just saw, PB Scott, there on the screen, at 58 Half a Tree Road, mm -hmm. they have built about 300,000 square feet of space for BPOs, mm -hmm. and that should employ maybe five, 6,000 persons when complete. Um, Usain Bolt is involved with another development further down half a tree mm -hmm. road. So there's development. Now, what we have to do is ensure that persons can take advantage of the development, meaning we invest in the training so that when these hotels open, that locals can work in the hotels, become managers, similarly in the BPO. Mm -hmm. So what I focused on as Member of Parliament is trying to put in place the educational infrastructure to facilitate persons having access to jobs and opportunities. So for example, we're now running about, we have about 230 persons in an unattached youth program. Run through heart, we're at two institutions, the International University of the Caribbean and at Cornerstone Ministries. They are trained in a number of disciplines. It's free to them. They get a small stipend of $500 a day. And at the end of one year, they will have hard certification. And all things being equal, if you have certification, it puts you in a better position to get a job yes. or to take advantage of an opportunity. We have other issues um, in the Seymour Lands area. One of the big issues is the extent of the change in nature of the, the landscape. So mm -hmm. you have one 10-story ten, ten building going up now. Now, if you have lived in an area for 50 years mm -hmm. and a 10-story building is built beside your home, mm -hmm. you're going to have some issues. So yes. we have those kinds of issues where single-dwelling homes are being converted into townhouses mm -hmm. and in apartment complexes. It poses a number of planning challenges in terms of traffic, water, sewage, all of these things which you now have to contemplate because you take a place where you might have had five people living with two cars mm -hmm. to somewhere with 50 or 100 people living with 100 cars. Mm -hmm. And how does the infrastructure deal with that kind of thing? So there are, there are multiplicity of issues. Unemployment certainly remains a big issue for particularly for young people. And I have tried with interventions to not necessarily, you can find jobs through your personal connections, yes. but to put people in a position that they can take advantage of a job. So I've run job readiness workshops for the last year, preparing people, interview skills, that kind of thing, how to write a resume, how to dress properly, those kinds of things, so that when the opportunities come up, you can take advantage of it. You've been party general secretary since two thousand, deputy general secretary since 2003. Three, and then in 
2016, December 2016, yes. I became general secretary. Right. In the 13 years of, uh, I don't want to call it serving an apprenticeship, but it's not a pejorative <laughs> descriptor. So and yeah, you I understand, understand that. You're, you're a man of learning, yes. Yeah. So, so that th those 13 years, looking at how the machinery was, was, was run and, yeah. and, and directing how the machinery yeah. was yeah. run, and I, I, I remember an interview you gave where you noted that, look, in that 13 years, but even though a titular title, my, I was Deputy General Secretary, there were many occasions when I was the one carrying sure. the bulk of the work as circumstances dictated. Sure. Uh, the lessons that you learned from that long apprenticeship, 13 years? I put it this way. When you get in the seat, it's different yes. being in the seat. And um, it, it certainly prepared me. But once you get in the seat, you get thrown everything, you know, the, I suppose the party leader ultimately will be the person who is responsible and then next to the party leader is the general secretary. So an issue arises in a constituency, as general secretary you have to deal with it. Um, there is uh, two persons have a disagreement mm -hmm. and they take it on social media, you have to deal with it. Yes. I mean, so yes, I would say it has prepared me well, but there is nothing like being in the seat yes. and being in the seat you you just have to manage a multiplicity of things um, my priorities are, as general secretary first is preparing ourselves for an election and even though we're halfway in a term yes we want to put our candidates in place from a very early stage yes so that they can build relationships with their constituents they can get to know people and that we don't have we have suffered in the past from what I would call last minute injections mm -hmm. of persons. Mm -hmm. So we want to avoid that. So that has been my first priority. Secondly, to ensure that in those constituencies, the basic political functions and work are taking place. So for example, political reps have responsibilities for outreach. You must be doing meetings with persons in your community. There is an enumeration program to ensure that you're adding people to the list. There are some basic political functions that we monitor to ensure that our representatives are in touch with their constituents and doing what they're supposed to do. The second area of the responsibility